Hello, Hiroja Shaib here with another uh, quick Hiroja Stop Bubble. Um, as you can see, I've started this series about just kind of explaining little principles about money. Uh, you know, what is money? Uh, the different denominations of Bitcoin, how to make it easier. Uh, John Nash is tomorrow, two parts. My reading of Ideal Money <laughs> and my best... <laughs> Uh, try not to ramble too much, but my best explanation of what ideal money is. Thursday, I'm going to break down, you know, just the formatting of the different de denominations now that we've named them, except for that one little open spot. And I look forward to your comments about who you think should have a place in history and having uh, a certain denomination of Bitcoin, a decimal place in a Bitcoin, be named after them. And then finally, Friday... There will be how you, as an individual, can spread the good word in a very unique, special manner that already has the infrastructure in place. It doesn't take that much of effort on your part to engage with it, but the dividend is paying off by your engagement in spreading the word about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. It's, it's almost divine in a sense, at least I think. So my thought I wanted to talk about was the fact that, you know, hey, we hit past 10k in the Bitcoin pricing. A lot of the alts are fiat value gone high, but as Skive, uh, the life of Skive, crypto, Skive Crypto, uh, he's a link to one of the fellow YouTubers down in the comments, has indicated the BTC value of these altcoins haven't done much gain. So at least a lot of them haven't. So that has to, you have to keep that in mind when you are seeking to invest, not investment advice, but Keep that in mind when uh, thinking about these altcoins. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to touch on a little bit of a subject because we have 10K. I kind of talked in the past about scams. In particular, uh, just the nature of them. Talked about them using the shy of the podcast, how the window of scams is getting shorter and shorter as the community becomes uh, more immune more hip to the ways of certain types of scams so the window gets shorter and shorter uh, the lifespan is not as big but because we're hitting 10k there's going to be an increase you already saw it with uh, Bitcoin gold with the stamp of approval of Bitcoin gold's website of boy, of, uh, of a particular wallet that sold almost 30 million dollars worth of Bitcoin that's the fiat value the Bitcoin value is greater if you think in the long term sense What? We see each other all the time. So? Oh my god, you just left me. But, but it's been so Bye. Anyways. <laughs> um. Oh, where was I going? Okay. So the, the scams are getting a little bit more sophisticated. They're getting more, the loss is felt greater, if you will. The potential gains are becoming more and more obvious. Just just ask any Mt. Gox uh, person uh, who's seeking to somehow obtain their Bitcoin back. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk about something that no one's really, really talking about within these scam spaces. Particularly with stuff like, you know, Bitcoin, Bitpetite, uh, Gladio coin, Aurora coin, uh, Genesis mining to some extent, any cloud mining service to some extent. Um, what is not talked about is, yeah, they're, they're scammers, right? They're scamming the space. But the people that participate, many of them are very well aware they're either pyramid schemes, they're outright scams. They're not the, what they're saying, and they're getting in to basically take advantage and get out. And that's not really what this space was about. This space was built, you know, for people to, to garner their, their private wealth, to have control of their private wealth, but not at a detriment to other people. Because that's what pretty much what our current economic system is, the exploitation of, uh, you know, resources, you know, mi mining, minerals, um, other kind of commodities development, labor, 
you know, there's still slavery out in this in this world. Uh, gratuitously low wages, just exploitation of labor in general, of people, uh, destruction of the environment, manipulation of markets. Just look at the silver or gold or any marketplace. Um, the, the space was tended to be a, little, a bit better. Acknowledge, you know, acknowledges that humans are infallible. You know, they're not infallible. Sorry, word. They are fallible. Anyway, they, they, you know, they're, we're awful, okay? That's why there's a built-in mechanism of a kind of a greed, an incentive, if you will, to pay people to behave well. Uh, miners mine the network because they're being paid to behave in a certain set of roles. It's within their incentive to participate and not cheat. Um, same with traders, businesses, wallet developers. It's within their own interest to participate in the network, run the nodes, participate in these rules because the gains to them will be greater if they are more cooperative and follow the rules than to circumvent, break, evade, manipulate, or just outright try to uh, create your own set of rules and try to make that um, work within the ecosystem, saying this is a rule now. Um, so what I mean by how this is not um, supposed to be, for example, was, and I know Satoshi gets um, <laughs> a lot of emphasis, but I just want to just point out that when Satoshi Nakamoto released the first Genesis block, which had 50 Bitcoins at the time, it had a hash. And in the hash, it had a headline um, concerning, uh, like, the chancellor went to somewhere from the India Times. Oh, I had it written down. And it talked about quantum easement. It talked about the state that we were in at the time of 2009, January 3rd, and how... Basically, they're going to pump a bunch of money into the economic system, and this is supposed to fix everything. It's short-term, yeah. It prevented people from riding in the streets and killing people because if the economy really, truly, fully crashed like it should have, there would have been a lot of people out of work, a lot of people, uh, no shelter, angry people who had hooked to the streets, it would have gotten violent. It would have been like uh, the tea protest or uh, Occupy Wall Street. There would have been riots. It's happened in the past, and there's a preventive measure to prevent that. And that's what a lot of these quantum easement and manipulations are, is to prevent the masses from overthrowing their governments. Um, just look what's happened in Zimbabwe. But... Um, So the principle of Satoshi Nakamoto, or at least the ideal of it, was that he wanted to create a system that individuals control their sovereign wealth. And with that principle comes responsibility, um, comes due diligence on the part of the individual, and it becomes a lot, comes with a lot of freedom. The ability to have a say in how your wealth is created, have a say in how your wealth is developed, have a say on your path forward, more so than the current economic system that we're in right now. Have an understanding basically of how the market truly works, seeing every aspect, all the nuts, bolts, nitty gritty of it. Everything is within your preview, everything is within your viewpoint, you can see everything, unlike the current system that we're in now, where you have to trust that the system works. So you know, trust these people. So when I, so when I see, okay, so I'm going to go back to the kind of finish here. Um, so for example of like market manipulation, look at Wells Fargo, or even look at the global collapse. For example, in the global collapse, there was a group of traders that you might have saw the movie with, called The Big Short. Uh, it started like Christian Bale, Brad Pitt, Ryan Gosling, Oh, Steve Carell, and they saw what was coming. They saw that uh, basically the subprime mortgages and the bundling of it was crap. There was nothing back in the housing market. It was a bunch of bullshit. Uh, of course, no one got, nobody went to jail for it, really. Uh, you know, there was all sorts of shenanigans like robo-signing, uh, 
falsifying people's income, uh, taking people that had qualified for not the, um, what's it called, what the loan is called, um, taking people that did qualify for a fixed interest rate and putting them into the into these bad loans where you know their interest rate is going to go up and revolve at the whim of the bank um, as a way of being a stop measure to all these bad loans they were making you know just a bunch of bullshit but these guys they saw it they bet against it uh, they protected their clients because they were head fund managers and they made off big about basically betting against America betting against the market if you will and hey, while the movie doesn't exactly portray them as heroes per se, and there there's some um, qualms that some of the, the key players in it had about what they were doing, where basically they are profiting on the misery of others. Um, they also didn't really like tell on anyone. They did anything they uncovered, any on the unseemliness that they saw, any of the, the shenanigans. It wasn't like they were reporting any of this to SEC. And some people did report it, and it still was ignored. But it wasn't like they were shouting from the mountaintop saying this is garbage or anything. They just took advantage of the situation and profited. Uh, another example, the Wells Fargo uh, falsified accounts. Taking people who already have accounts as Wells Fargo and adding like credit cards to their account, adding other additional accounts, and really in some cases fucking with people's credit. Um, and doing that so that you as a salesperson uh, individually receive a bonus if you did this, but as a company it made it seem that Wells Fargo had more people than they did. And that is in turn um, increased their, their market share, increased their, their stock pricing, increased investment and it was just a falsehood and they were profiting from it and again nobody's going to do so this is the kind of the mindset that Satoshi Nakamoto was trying to get people away from by adding a transparent financial system the public ledger the transparent system where you can see everything going on you can have an understanding what the marketplace is really doing how people are trading how people are, are moving their funds and monies and you can't see you can't have the type of scale manipulation that we are seeing currently in our current economic system. So when I see people, they say that they are in Big Connect and they know it's a scam. Some of them are doing it for investigative purposes, but some are like, you know, I know it's a scam, I'm going to profit, I'm not encouraging people to get into it, but I'm going to take what I can. It, I, I, in my sense, you're, you're almost kind of, the pro, kind of the problem. You're no different than that Wells Fargo individual that made false accounts. You're no different than that mortgage broker that falsified somebody's income, that, you know, f convince a person with good credit, good ratings, and convince them to have this bad loan, that that was the only loan they could qualify. Working with other fellow mortgages and collusion, there was a lot of collusion in this. And that is something that's not really, really openly discussed so much. There was a lot of collusion in this marketing when it came to the mortgages. Because if you went from bank to bank and bank and got the same answer, then you're thinking, you know, you can only get this type of loan when in fact what it was was all these banks were colluding to give you this type of loan. It wasn't because you qualified for that type of loan or that's the only loan you could get. It's because they were basically dictating and manipulating the market saying that this is the loan that you could only be provided. Basically removing your, your sense of choice which is what Bitcoin is supposed to be. It's about choice and the choices we make. So when I see people saying this, it just makes me unseemly. It means that you're kind of, probably, kind of the, probably part of the problem that you're propping this up. You know you're, it's a scam. As long as you get yours, you're okay with it. And mind you, the people that get involved in the scam, like the users, a lot of them are at fault. 90% of them are at fault because they do have choice. Unlike the mortgage situation or the Wells Fargo account, they have the opportunity to do their research, for one, to choose different marketplaces to invest their money. There's plenty of different other cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin being one of the biggest ones, they, they could invest their coins in. Or I should say, their fiat into coins in. 
So they had the choice of the market system. They were just lazy about it. Maybe because they've been so conditioned with the current market system that we're in, that they think this is the only way or the only opportunity, and scammers take advantage of that. They take advantage of lack of knowledge. They take advantage of our conditioning of how we view the financial monetary system. For those of us who maybe pause, um, maybe we, uh, sorry, I'm walking to work, <laughs> doing a little Kim, Kim Bozik, how's it goes it, here video, walking to work. Uh, you know, you're not helping. And you know how first introductions always are, make a lasting impression? So. Oh, I'm sorry, I saw you were talking. No, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, how uh, first impressions uh, make a lasting impression. Then how we lay the initial foundations of the framework, which is going to be the future economic system of the world, is going to set the tone. And it's going to be very, very difficult to go back and undo. You can't undo, just like you can't undo, you know, sending something, some BTC or Litecoin uh, to the wrong address. Maybe you can hope the person who has that address will give it back to you, but you can't undo it. You can't undo the set the tone that has happened here in this space in which so many scams have proliferated. And the community for the most part is either indifferent to it, uh, participating in the scam, knowing it's a scam, uh, considers it not their problem, which I've always had an issue with, that whole concept in and of itself. And there's layers to it, but that's for a video for another time. It's, it comes to the point, are, are we playing a game of musical chairs with Bitcoin? Is Bitcoin the ideal money or the avenue to create the ideal money? A transparent system that's international meets the needs of short-term, long-term needs of individuals and countries can operate domestically with ease or regionally in a sense. And, you know, have the vehicle or the mechanism or the means for people to be able to have sustainable wealth for themselves. Not substantial, sustainable. When you wake up in the morning, you lay your head down, the marketplace jumps to 10K plus. It doesn't plummet to negative 10K. You know, you're not having that, what we currently have, the rocky type of system that we have here. And I talk more about that with the uh, part two of John Nash video about ideal money and what that really means. But fundamentally what I'm getting back to is, or the point really is, is are we creating a system that truly is for everyone, that everyone can truly have say in their wealth, have substantial wealth, as a sustainable wealth, not substantial, sustainable wealth for themselves, or are we playing a game of musical chairs? We're just basically trading out the old guy for a new guy who just happens to have better hair. So enjoy your 10K celebrations. I'm sure the memes are going to be prolific. I'm sure we're going to hit, I don't know, 20K by the end of the month. Who knows? Maybe people do some sell-offs. Maybe people are going to sell hold. Who knows? But Price is not everything. There, there's more to the price. You gotta really think of the future. Now is the time to do it. Uh, so now is really to get about serious about instead of talking about laying the foundations of a new economic system, but making a new economic system a reality. So thank you for listening, as always, to the moon.